early before the show, or you just happened to be? Here? Well, I knew that they wanted to do a lot of publicity, yeah. and I was in Texas this week anyway, um, oh. seeing a friend of mine was in a show in Austin. I went down to see her there, and mm -hmm. then um, going to see my grandfather, who's ill. Oh, um, yes. So I happened to be in Texas this week anyway, and I said, well, since I'm here, why don't oh. we do this all in advance, get it out there, you know, have yes. people have time to air it beforehand, and and there's quite a bit of it, and so I, I, I'd rather do it now when I'm, because we have off this week, and I don't have to now go do a show tonight, so that's easier. Yeah, because so often they schedule these on Tuesday, and then they'll open Tuesday night. Well, I do. I have some tomorrow, and it's like at 7 o'clock in the morning, and if you have to go from 7 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, you sort of run out of steam. <laughs> so, and the show's hard, so it's, uh, oh, it's got you know, to be. I, I need my energy. I hope you will. Oh, we'll I'll be here in two it. weeks. So. Okay, good. <laughs> good okay, talk. is that better? <clears throat> okay. okay. You're rolling? Yeah. Okay. Deborah, I, I shouldn't say welcome to Dallas. I should say welcome back. Welcome back. Happy to be back. Yes. And you're an East Texas girl. I am. I grew up in Jacksonville, Texas. And you can't be any more East Texas than that. <laughs> I hope it's dead center. There it is. And then uh, all of your college was at SMU? Mm -hmm. I spent, um, I graduated from SMU. Oh, no. What is going on? I don't think it's moving off. <coughs> Who, who's doing that? I don't know. We'll find out. Thank you. Okay. You're rolling? Yeah. So you spent all of your college years at SMU? I graduated from SMU uh, with a degree in communications, and I studied extensively with their really outstanding dance department. Um, I did spend a year abroad. My junior year I went to England and uh, was there for that entire year, but um, otherwise I was here in Dallas. So your goal then was always to be mm -hmm. a dancer? Actually, no. I, I, I had danced my whole life, but I never thought that I would do it as a profession. I mean, I grew up in Jacksonville, Texas, and although it turns out it's kind of a hotbed of talent, apparently, <laughs> because there's a lot of people from Jacksonville who've gone on to have great success. Um, I never really dreamed it would happen to me. I never, it always seemed like something that happened to other people. Um, and I always studied dance very intensely. I mean, it was something I absolutely loved, but I didn't think it was something I could do as a career. I didn't have any model for that. I didn't know how to go about that. And, and also, I, I think, I felt expectations were that I would, you know, I, I was in honors classes and a National Merit Scholar, and, and I think there were certain expectations that I would go be a doctor or a lawyer or a physicist or a, you know, a, a professor or something like that, and so it didn't, dancer wasn't on that list. <laughs> um, but what happened is when I went my junior year, I went overseas, and I thought, okay, time to move on and uh, get on with my life and, you know, travel and see the world, and I'm going to stop dancing and grow up and do what I need to do now. And I did travel and see the world and had an amazing time. And there was this huge hole in my life where the dancing had been. And I thought, well, if traveling Europe and seeing great art and, and being in a new culture and doing all these things can't fill that up, then um, clearly this is something more than a hobby to me. Clearly this is something about who I am. So I came back and I got my degree in communications and I um, got back in shape, started dancing more. And uh, I moved to Chicago to study with Hubbard Street. Um, and danced with a modern dance company while I was up there, and um, danced on a cruise ship for six months uh, after that. And then I moved to New York, and I became a rockette while I was there. For, I did that for four years, and then I did another Broadway show, and then Contact came along. So um, my dream, my childhood dream, um, came true. You know, I, 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 it was something I could almost barely dare to dream of being as a child. I just it seemed like something that happened to other people, you know, and and like it was a wonderful magical thing that happened in movies, but it would never happen to me. It doesn't happen really happen to girls from Jacksonville, Texas. Um, what was the other Broadway show you did before contact? It was called Dream. Um, it was about the music of Johnny uh, lyrics of Johnny Mercer. And uh, it was somewhat short lived. It wasn't around very long, but it was a really valuable learning experience for me. It was my first Broadway show and um, I, I gained a tremendous amount of experience from that show, so that by the time Contact came along, I kind of had a better idea. Contact was my first leading role. Was Contact through the usual audition process? Mm -hmm. Casting director called me, and it was a, a, a private audition. Uh, Susan Stroman, uh, I, 
I just knew I wanted to work with Susan Stroman, and this was before she was as huge as she is now, and she's the it girl now, but uh, even before that, she was a very successful choreographer, and um, I knew that I wanted to work with her, and so I went to the audition, and I walked in, and it was the creme of the creme of Broadway. I mean, every girl in there had ten Broadway shows on her resume, and, and was already in a Broadway show, and every audition I went to, I lost the role to that girl, you know, it was that sort of thing, and I thought, I don't have a chance, I don't have a chance of getting this role. Um, but I kind of just shrugged my shoulders and said, well, I'm going to do it anyway, and just to try to have fun. And I had more fun at that audition than I've ever had at any audition. I just loved it. Something about Stroh's, Stroman's choreography uh, fits me, fits my body, fits the way I move. I understand it. It makes sense to me. And um, I just had a ball. And so I had that audition, and then I had a call back. I had another audition a uh, week or two later. And um, I was actually at Radio City working when I got the phone call saying I had gotten the job. And I knew in that moment that my life had just changed. Don't you think because you were relaxed and you felt, oh, I don't have a chance, I may just, I just enjoy myself. I just did it for me, yeah. I think it was a combination of the fact that I, I like doing Stroman's work. I mean, I think she's an intelligent, creative, and original choreographer. And so I think some of it's just that experience, that you're doing something really quality and so you really enjoy it. And some of it also was that I, I didn't think I had a shot at this role. I mean, you, you kind of hold out that hope, but um, I just assumed it would go to one of these more experienced girls. And, um, and so, yeah, I probably did have some freedom um, in, in, the, in my approach to it that, that helped. You're known, of course, as the girl in the yellow dress. Mm -hmm. And you created the role on Broadway, and now you're doing the National Company, and we are so thrilled to get these star, you know, uh, to do our production here in Dallas. But um, the girl in the yellow dress, that tag is going to follow you forevermore. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with that? I am okay with that, because getting to originate a role on Broadway is an honor, period. And this role, this character in particular became an icon, became part of theater history, and became a sensation. And um, I'm honored to be the person who got to do that, to embody that and create that. And, and I'm okay with that following for the rest of my life because I love this role. I'm passionate about this character. And it has been a beautiful part of my life. And um, I'm very proud of her, so I'm, I'm okay with people knowing me that way. I hope I get to go on to do many other things and have many other uh, labels associated with me, but um, I will never regret being known as the girl in the yellow dress. The dress itself kind of took on its own life. <laughs> it did. <laughs> it was almost out there dancing by itself. <laughs> well, I understand that the dress we see is actually the ninth. I think it was number 10. N yeah. Number 10? Yeah, I think it's, it was. It's the 10th one they created. Mm -hmm. So the other nine were rejected, is that right? Well, it was a process. It, uh, it's not like the design changed so radically. It's not like we had one idea and then, no, it's another idea. It, the, the essence of the dress was the same all the way through, but um, we ask an awful lot of this dress. <laughs> it has to be form-fitting and sexy, and yet at the same time it can't you know, the undergarments can't show through, the foundation that holds the dress in place, and, and it has to have movement and swing and, and, and be appropriate to my character. Originally it was much shorter, and as I got to know my character better, I thought she wouldn't wear something that obvious. She's not an obvious person. She's elegant and sexy, but she would be more understated. She doesn't try that hard. And so I wanted it to be longer, which gave us a wonderful movement, but then you have other issues about uh, is it going to catch on your heel as you're dancing, which did happen. and. Um, and then I have to be lifted. I, I get lifted in many of these numbers by the men that I partner with. And, uh, you know, certain early versions of the dress, they would go and they would put their hands on my hips and get right. We would, I would jump and we'd do the lift and the dress would go and I'd stay there. <laughs> so that's not a good thing. So we'd have to fix that. And every time we would fix one problem, we would change the design on one thing, it would create another problem. And so it, it just, it was a process. But William Ivy Long, who is our costume director, was brilliant at it and persistent and and we eventually solved all of them. Um, and it, it works beautifully now. You know, I don't have any problems with it. But it took a while to get there. What is the fabric? You know what? I think they're actually making a fabric now specifically for this dress. Um, it's, a, it's a stretchy, sparkly material. Um, and, and William would be able to tell you exactly what it's made out of. It has an undergarment, a base, that kind of holds me and the dress together, you know, kind of puts us together. 
and uh, then there's a, a, a lining that's underneath the dress, and then the dress itself, which is very form-fitting, um, is a sparkly, stretchy yellow material, um, which has a lot of uh, movement to it, a lot of play. And how many of those do you have? Um, I think right now I have actually three of them, the two of them really that I use regularly, and one kind of as a backup. Um, because I do eight shows a week, and so I'll wear one, and then that will get laundered while, and I wear the other one for the second show. Um, so you have to have at least two, and, and accidents happen. You know, it gets ripped or gets dirty or zipper breaks or, you know, all sorts of, somebody spills something on you, all sorts of things happen. So you, you always have to have a backup. <laughs> the show itself is a dance show, yes. dance and music show. And uh, it, so there's not a... It, well, let me let me ask you: Is there any dialogue? Or oh yes, oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, it, it is an acting. I always approach it actually as an acting role first and foremost, and there absolutely is dialogue. Um, there are large sections where there is where the entire story is told through dance, but um, there absolutely is a script and, and dialogue and interaction and scenes that that happen as well. Were all of you shocked, or did you kind of anticipate a bunch of awards? I don't think any of us knew what we had when we were developing it. I don't think we were thinking in those terms, actually. Um, I th the fact that it was such a huge hit was um, a surprise and, and a wonderful surprise. We were very happy about it, but we didn't set out trying to create a Tony Award winning piece. We were just creating something. And um, we were all a little taken by surprise when it was such an enormous commercial and critical hit right away. Now, we, we did it at an off-Broadway theater first at Lincoln Center, and then it was such a huge hit that they moved it upstairs to the Broadway house, and then we ended up winning the Tony Award for Best Musical for the year 2000. So it, it felt a little bit like a rags-to-riches story for the musical itself, too. And um, I don't know that you ever expect to win it, um, but we were so proud of our piece and we were so happy to be honored in that way. As far as doing the, um, <clears throat> as far as doing the role out of town, are you on a nationwide tour or? Well, the tour has been out for a year and the woman who was doing my part on the road um, left and they've asked me to come and join the tour for the last uh, few weeks. And um, so I'm here and I just am lucky enough that I'm ending up and uh, the tour is wrapping up uh, in my home state of Texas. Well, you're happy. We're ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me just check my notes. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I, I think that uh, that covers it pretty well. Okay. Deborah, you are just delightful. Oh, I can't thank wait you. to see you on stage thank because you. you project so much personality. Just in an interview, I can I can only imagine what's going to happen when I see you on stage. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoy it. And thanks for your time today. My pleasure. Thank you. That's wonderful. Okay. Okay. Now he's going to do it. Do you need white balance again? No. no. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Are you rolling? Yeah. Okay. You will forever be known as the girl in the yellow dress. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with that? I really am. I, I feel like it's um, an honor to be this person. Um, you know, it's a role that I love, that I'm passionate about. Okay, it's fine. <clears throat> when you auditioned for the girl in the yellow dress in Contact, what was the audition like? Uh, there were, it was the creme de la creme of Broadway. I mean, everybody who was already somebody was there, and I never, didn't think I had a chance. Okay, that's good. Um, let's see. This is billed primarily as a dance and music show, but is there dialogue? Absolutely. There definitely is. I mean, it's a story. It, it, there's three separate stories, but there, there are stories that are told. Okay. Um, The dress actually has taken on a life of its own. <laughs> How many dresses were there before they got the one? I think we went through ten dresses. Um, and of course, we've, once we've got the finalized version, you go through a couple of more just remakes of that because they fall apart. But okay. What is the fabric in the dress? It's a stretchy, sparkly kind of thing. Okay. Um, How many dresses do you have? I have three, I think. You know, I have two that I alternate between.
between shows and one backup. That should do it. Now, do you, the, the whole yellow look you have to get into, uh, what is it? I didn't ask you, but I think I have an idea. Uh, of course, your hair is blonde, mm -hmm. but what else? And uh, well, It's mostly this yellow dress. I have on new tights and sort of tan shoes to kind of okay. have them fade out. And when I first come in, I have a yellow purse, a yellow scarf.